This is Twit. The the entire knowledge of human civilization is now safely backed up on the lunar surface. You may have been following uh, the uh, the mission uh, of this uh, intuitive machines I am one lunar lander. The first time we've landed on the moon since Apollo. Uh, you may remember that it was actually quite a story about the landing. Uh, they somebody <laughs> somebody forgot to flip a switch uh, before takeoff that would turn on these special cameras that were designed to help the lander land uh, on the moon. And as a result, it was coming in blind. Let me see if I can find this because this was such a great uh, software fix. It turned out. Uh, that there was um, a package, a scientific package, already on the, the the lander with LIDAR and some other stuff available to it. So they scrambled at Intuitive Machines and got that package working and, in fact, were able to touch down on the moon. Uh, the laser range finder on the, on the uh, lander were not working properly because somebody forgot to turn it on so controllers uploaded a software patch to uh on the lander to use in their place to use a, a, a nasa doppler lidar payroll it was originally going to be a technology demonstration to help it land and it did except it tripped <laughs> it missed a boulder apparently and one of the legs of the lander hit the boulder and the lander landed on its side which is why they've had a little trouble communicating, but it is communicating, and many of the payroll packages uh, will work. The landing was the first on the moon by a privately developed spacecraft, the first soft landing on the moon by any American spacecraft since, since 1972. Um, it was a NASA-commissioned project, though, so it was, it was a NASA uh, payload. The mission carried six NASA payloads through the Commercial uh, Lunar Payload Services Program. But also on there were some non-NASA payloads. Uh, Columbia Sportswear <laughs> had some jackets on there. They say to test as an installation for a propellant tank. But really, I think it was an ad for Columbia Sportswear. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the International Lunar Observatory Association put two astrono astronomical cameras up there. Jeff Koontz provided an artwork called Moon Phases. That's the part that landed face down, by the way. Well, okay, so it's there, but no one was going to be able to see it anyway, right? So now it's face down. But the most interest, uh, by the way, there was another one, the Eagle Cam, built by students at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Eagle Cam was designed to be ejected from the lander during its descent and then reaching the surface ahead of the lander so that they could get pictures of it landing. Did that work, John? Do we know? It didn't eject it. They, it didn't eject. So no pictures. Too bad because we'd like to see the, see the sideways thing. But the thing that I got my attention, and this is uh, written by a Nova Spivak, who was with the Arch Mission Foundation. They sent up a lunar library made of thin sheets of nickel called nanofiche that are practically indestructible and can withstand the harsh conditions of space. What's on those thin sheets of nickel? A backup the of... Wikipedia! The Wikipedia! You're right! A backup of human knowledge that can now endure untouched on the moon for eternity, which might beg the question, why? Why? Uh, and how do we edit it when things change? <laughs> right. So on there, the Wikipedia, you got it. Six million articles, the English language Wikipedia. Project Gutenberg, 70,000 public domain e-books. Uh, all the, uh, I mean, it's all the good stuff. You know, the Dickens stuff, the, you know, Robert Louis Stevens. It's all public domain uh, novels and, and books. Plus, <laughs> David Copperfield's tricks. So this is a little strange. David Copperfield's what? Magic Secrets. The secrets to what? all his greatest illusions, including how he will make the moon disappear in the near future. And I'm thinking, first of all... Don't tell the moon. Don't tell yeah, the right, moon. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> We're going to make you disappear. Please, don't tell anybody. Um, 
he must have paid for this, right? He is a billionaire. He's he's made a lot of money. He's not. I would say he's arguably not the best music, magician in the world. I would have much rather known how Penn and Teller did their tricks. Yep. But he must have paid them some money for this. It's just publicity, because. <laughs> Except that I was thinking, what if arch you know, ain't, you know, in distant future, a, a, an intelligent species comes, and they land on the moon, and they find this thing, and they realize there's something on there, and they open it up, and they see David Copperfield's magic secrets. What are they going to think? Is it like, yeah, he must have been the leader of of the of the <laughs> civilization, right? And and why was he sawing people in half? And like <laughs> what the? What's going what on? What the now? hell? Long now foundations seven thousand. Record the Rosetta Project of 7,000 human languages. Selections from the Internet Archives Collection. The SETI Institute's Earthling Project with 10,000 vocal submissions representing Humanity United. <laughs> Why do they have to send this to the moon? I don't know. The Arch Mission Primer, which teaches a million concepts with images and words in five languages. I think that maybe they're thinking, you know, if it all goes to hell on the Earth... At least it will all be up on there on the moon. But then the only way you'd get That's to reassuring. it is to have enough technology to go back and right. get it. By which time all well, of this that, is useless. That's basically, uh, that's kind of sort of what happened in uh, Space Odyssey, where uh, where there was a monolith buried on the moon. It was the technology to go find it undi and dig it up and then expose it to sunlight that triggered much of what happened in the movie, right? right? So so it's kind of sort of like a that. A radio message I, I do, to Jupiter. And then yeah. when you get to Jupiter, you find out all these worlds, except one, are yours, right? Like, don't go near right. us. Except, right? except Europa. Except Europa. The aliens will get to the moon, and they'll be like, wow, they, they messed that planet yeah. up real good. <laughs> yeah, no wonder. Then no wonder like, they ah, they left us No something. wonder there's just a smoldering boulder where the Earth used They to couldn't be. even land this rover right. What happened? I guess they were drinking way <laughs> too much like mezcal sideways, before they sent it sideways up. rover lying there. <laughs> help me, help Magic me. Trick. Oh, my God. The entire <laughs> civilization's records. This is the third in, time in, they've tried to do this, by the way. They failed two times yeah. before. Right. Um, here's... <laughs> Here's what Nova Spivak writes. Uh, uh, we have safeguarded our cultural heritage far beyond Earth, ensuring that no matter what the future holds, our history, knowledge, and accomplishments, and our best magic tricks will persist untarnished on the moon for eons oh to come. These people don't it's, take themselves too seriously at all. Yeah. It's, and it's not that far. It's not that 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 far removed from the earth. It's kind of right there. But um, the, the big note. So in keeping well, with you your say it's right there, but it took us a, a long time to get there. I mean, it wasn't the yes, easiest. But it's in, 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 in the universe scale, right. the earth and the moon are essentially touching. But but the the the, the good news is that we're actually at the cusp of a, of a new era of space exploration, which is really, really exciting. There was a great article in The Atlantic from uh, Marina Corin uh, called Apollo Sequel Will Be a Gold Rush. And I don't know if anybody's seen the TV series uh, For All Mankind, but it's it's starting to look like a For All Mankind kind of a thing. So just briefly, For All Mankind is a alternative history where the Soviets beat the Americans to the moon. The space race didn't end with moon exploration, but actually heated up and a lot more money was plowed into it. And then they go into the future, uh, into Mars exploration and everything else. We're about to, and it was all public-private, a lot of public-private stuff. Some of the most advanced technology was private companies. There's an Elon Musk-like character at some point who shows up with his own space program. And so... This is a great series, but but over the next like five years, ten years, it's going to look a lot more like this series where the where there's private companies, lots of countries are going to be having space programs of their own, a lot of moon exploration, probably a permanent uh, presence by the United States on the moon, and probably a couple of other countries. Uh, serious, uh, you know, the U.S. is getting serious about Mars, and so it's uh, it's really an exciting. I think it's going to be an exciting decade for for space enthusiasts and and also there's been this argument made that the moon is sort of a pit stop on the way to the mars right where you could like maybe stop and re recharge or whatever so you could also see it the other way around if anybody ever comes to visit us maybe they're going to stop on the moon first they're going to look at this rover right. and they're going to read all this stuff and then they're going to and then turn around plans, and go back. maybe change the travel <laughs> a little bit <laughs> find a way around this who knows we figured out how to 
we have to play the nickel microfish. And here is what it says. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna <laughs> let you down. Never gonna turn around. And this is That's all it is. It's just yeah, one video. It's just, it's just right. Rick Astley. Over. You see this guy never saws them in half? <laughs> Uh, well, that's interesting. I mean, look, and it's one of the reasons we we launched a show called This Week in Space because I felt the same way, yeah. Mike, that we are on the precipice yeah. of something very exciting. It's, I mean, you and I grew up watching, uh, you know, space exploration. Um, yep. uh, you know, the last time we landed on the moon, I was 16 years old. It's been it's been a while. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and so uh, it's fun to see it happen again. I don't know. The same arguments are going to pop up that popped up in the 60s, which is, well, so what? Why? We've got real problems here at home. Why are we spending billions to do this? And I guess it's just it's human nature that we want to explore. And um, it's not it's a small percentage of our overall expenditure. Well, that's, that was actually one of the uh, things that um, was interesting about the show For All Mankind, and which I think is true. And I think it's actually been demonstrated by the Apollo program, which is that, you know, for every dollar you spend in space exploration, you tend to get, you know, $30 back in, in economic value. Do you, in terms of the do you really? Stuff like that. In do the you? series, actually, the Soviet Union never falls because their, ah. their space exploration funds their country to the point where they don't have an economic collapse. So, I don't know. Yeah, how did it, that work out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. So it's, you know, I, I, I tend to think that if you, if you want to justify it in terms of dollars and cents, you can, I think it's pretty easy to do that. But. Well, I don't know if that's, it's the also case, cool. But. Like we should, we definitely should have something in our budget for like cool stuff. Yeah, It's cool. Like municipalities do yeah. fireworks. Federal government right. should do space. It's like fireworks. It's just like, you're right. Yeah. Cool budget. It just we makes you feel cool budget. Good. It's yeah. less than the entire amount of, uh, of money we spend on pizzas every year in this country. So it's, you know, it's like that. It's and that a, pizza money is money well spent. So I, certainly nobody's complained about I, that. I'm contributing to a large percentage of that budget. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, the News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening. <laughs>